new semester, a new episode of TLB TV. Welcome back. I'm Alex Flum. And I'm Danielle Stein. Winter sports may not be over just yet, but spring sports are ready to roll. That's right. The spring Terps are back in action, and we're here to preview them all. We went to Spring Sports Media Day and talked to some of the players and coaches, so let's take a look at those highlights. First thing is we've been outside, which has been amazing. Um, and so we just work on all parts of the game and then the mental side as well. We've been going, I think, roughly a month. Uh, I think we started January 5th, so it was great to get back out there. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of excitement about the season. Uh, the, the big issue for us is we've been breaking a lot of records. I mean, we broke the 300 record men and women, broke the 600 record men and women. Uh, we just raised the bar this year. We're hoping to have a great conference tournament this year and, uh, you know, turn some heads uh, towards Maryland. Do you have any, like, pre-game rituals? Yeah, yeah, I'm big on music before a game. Uh, fun fact, there are movie instrumentals and movie scores. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, there could be some Rocky in there, some Creed, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, that's what gets me in the moment. Uh, we're a very diverse team. I mean, we have country, hip hop, pop. You have it. Movie scores. You have it all. Fantastic coach that always says to me, "Okay, just like relax, breathe, smile. No one is gonna die today." <laughs> Make me feel better, actually. You have won two national championships. How many games have I lost? Like three, four. I've definitely. I can count on one hand the number of times like I've lost as a turf, and that's just like I'm so lucky to be a part of such an awesome program. After a 1-2 and two start to their season, men's lacrosse had a run for the ages. 16 consecutive wins in their third straight trip to the Final Four, but in Philadelphia they were met with overtime heartbreak. The end of the season is a result of what you do all year, and so you just have to really think short term, you know, doing everything all year the right way uh, and being consistent with your approach, you know, your fundamentals. Sean Cottle is joining us, our new TLB TV reporter for the men's lacrosse team. Welcome aboard. Thanks for having me. Having a good time. Awesome. So men's lacrosse, they're coming off of an overtime loss, as we just spoke about. What can they do to come back this year? Well, this is unfortunately familiar, familiar territory for Maryland. As you know, they lost four out of the last six national championship games. So they're really going to have to turn to their seniors. Coach Hillman's really going to have to turn to his seniors to try to combat this and actually get one for the first time since 1975. And you bring up those seniors. Who's really one or maybe two seniors to keep an eye out? Well, I'll give you a trio. The attack trio of Dylan Maltz, Colin Heacock, and Matt Rambo, all seniors. This is an attack-led team, and it's going to be a senior Latin team. So they're really going to have to get focused for this upcoming year. Now, we've seen the team already in action against Navy. Um, first of all, how'd they look in that? And then what can we expect to see from them throughout the rest of the year? Well, nine of the 15 goals came from that trio I just mentioned earlier. But uh, junior goaltender Dan Morris from Texas is really going to have to step up his game. 12 saves in his first career start, 50% shooting percentage. So they're really going to have to step up on the defensive end rather than the offensive end. All right, thanks, Sean, for coming on. Make sure to keep up with all of Sean's TLB TV coverage throughout the rest of the season. He'll be on the beat with Christina Johnson, and we'll have our writer, Johnny Moseman, in action as well. Last year, the women's lacrosse team was almost perfect. Kathy Reese and company took a 22-0 record into the national title game, but like the men, also fell to North Carolina. This year marks the beginning of the post-Taylor Cummings era, where the team will try to bounce back. This year, we're trying to be the best team that this group can be. You know, it's not about replacing these these awesome players of the past, but yet making making the best of what we have and the opportunities we have. So. All right, we now welcome Max Marcillo, our TLB TV beat reporter for women's lacrosse, onto the show. Max, good to have you on. Thank you for having me. So let's get right into things and talk about last season. End of the year, tough way to end in losing in the championship. How did they come back and rebound this year? Well, head coach Kathy Reese stressed at Media Day that this Maryland team doesn't have to beat last year's Maryland team. It just has to be the best version of this year's team that it can be. So I think that's a good message to send. And also, it's a tough schedule, which it'll be tough throughout the regular season. Maryland plays five of the top ten teams in the country right now. However, it'll prepare them for, you know, come tournament time. I mean, it is hard not to compare the two teams. I mean, this Maryland team last season had some huge names, Taylor Cummings and Alice Mercer. How is this Maryland team going to fill those voids this season? Well, the Terps have a pair of senior captains, Zoe Stukenberg, one, Nadine Hadnagy, another one. So Maryland has some returning players. Of course, a loss like Taylor Cummings will hurt, but I think they have enough talent coming back that they can keep up with the top teams in the country. Well, Max, thank you so much for coming on, and we're looking forward to seeing your coverage this season. Thank you for having me. Some big changes from Maryland baseball. With the graduations of Mike Schwarren and Anthony Papio, others will need to step up. 
on paper, you know, we feel like we can run five starters out there that have experience and or a fair amount of talent. Uh, probably four to five experienced bullpen guys. Um, and we have experienced players in key positions. More on Maryland baseball, we have Scott Gelman, Diamondback beat reporter with us. How are you doing, Scott? Great. Thank you for having me. Of course. So, Maryland baseball, top 25 in the preseason rankings. They're in the 22 spot. What can we expect this season? I mean, anything short of an NCAA tournament appearance would be disappointing. The Big Ten competition is subpar. You have a lot of returning players led by shortstop Kevin Smith. So at the end of the day, you're looking for this team to make a very, very deep run into the Big Ten tournament, if not um, win the Big Ten tournament as their favorite to do and ultimately get to that NCAA tournament. Now, a lot of changes on John Chef's team this year. You know, we talked about no more Schwarin, no more Papio. Who's right. a guy to really keep a look at? Who's somebody that's going to make or break this season? Right, well, I'm particularly intrigued by the Sunday pitching matchup because you have a young guy and then a guy that's coming back and returning. So you look at the potential returner in, in Hunter Parsons and then you have uh, freshman Tyler Blum. And those are two guys that are really going to make or break this team in an aspect of you have two solidified starters, one on Friday, one on Saturday. You really need that one guy to come and step up on Sunday. And if one of the two are able to do that, you're looking at a very deep pitching staff. And then looking towards the end of the season, if this team is going to make a deep run in the postseason, what's going to be the key? Kevin Smith's going to have to have just a breakout season. I mean, he did it in the Cape Cod League over the summer, but if he doesn't have that success um, that he had over the summer with Maryland this season, you're looking at a team that, yes, they have some great power in the middle of the order. You have Nick Dunn at second base, but um, if you don't get a solid season from Kevin Smith, the guy is uh, probably going to get drafted. You look at this team and he doesn't produce. It's not looking very good. All right, well, thanks, Scott, for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, your analysis, and make sure to keep up with all of Scott's coverage all throughout the season. It's been a rough few years for Maryland softball. Three coaches in three seasons. Last year, Julie Wright left Idaho State to become the Terps head coach, and this year, she's back for more. Because they came back this year, and they know what to expect, and they know how it's going to be said and what the language is. I mean, everything's the same. That consistency for, for young people, that, that's a major player in their success. Off to a 4 0 start, Maryland's tennis matches its best start to a season with two familiar faces to TLB TV Christina Hovzepian and Alexandra Stanova. This powerhouse duo got the win in getting the sweep this past weekend over Richmond. Maryland golf is ready to get back into the swing of things. The men's team placed in the top 10 in four of their five fall tournaments. Next weekend, they'll head down to Puerto Rico to start their spring season. The women's team, well, they're just getting back from San Juan. They'll have a schedule packed with some tough opponents this year. We're ranked 64th in the country right now, and one of our goals is to continue to do as well as we did in the fall and make it to NCAA postseason. So mm -hmm. to wrap up our show, we have our great friend of TLB TV, Misha mm -hmm. Powell, Danielle. Olympic athlete <laughs> and track star at Maryland. We're so good to see you again. So great to see you too. So <laughs> last time we spoke, it was in the fall yes. and you were just preparing for the fall and the winter season. Yeah. So how has this year been oh going gosh. for you? I can't believe that that was already just like a few months ago. Yeah, it feels like it was yesterday. Um, it's been pretty incredible. Honestly, that transition, like I was telling you about going from the Olympics to training um, back with the team has been amazing because I was able to be in such different places and yet still have to focus on the same goal which is always believing in my abilities to run fast. So this uh, indoor season is coming uh, to a close. We still have two more meets left and uh, basically the team has just been so strong. We have incredible freshmen and then now I'm a senior so I get to kind of you know help them along if they have any questions and also do my thing on the track and my favorite thing is just seeing them light up after I run a relay. That's crazy. So senior year, <laughs> outdoor season is coming up. Mm -hmm. What will you be running? Yeah, so I will be running the 400 meters uh, for the outdoor season and also doing a little bit more of speed. So I'll be probably dabbling in the 200 and the 100 as well. Being a student athlete, you're so busy all the time. Yes. <laughs> what else do you do? Well, I am an avid, um, healthy eater. Um, so a lot of people know me as um, for my Snapchats because I always cook all my breakfasts in the morning no matter what. And I've seen some of the pictures. They're, they're beautiful, I have <laughs> to say. You. Great. Do you have a favorite thing you have to cook? Uh, yes. I love, so breakfast, I love turkey bacon no matter what. And uh, Tilapia is my go-to dinner. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on the show you. again. We're so happy to have you. And Absolutely. Good luck with your last semester as a Terp. I know thank that's hard you. to think about, but I know you're gonna <laughs> leave it all out there this season. 
Well, it's been about two months since we've given you your last fix of your favorite segment on our show. So without further ado, we have Juan Final Thought. Juan, what do you got to say about spring sports? Thanks for having me. So my trip to Argentina in January was great, but do you know what else is great? Maryland Athletics. Both the men's and women's lacrosse team are ranked second in the nation, and I'm expecting really great things from them this year. But I'd like to take a minute to talk about the number 23 ranked men's basketball team and the number two ranked women's basketball team. If you combine both rankings together, you get 25, which coincidentally is the same name as Adele's new album, which has won many Grammys. So I think all Maryland fans should hope that the Terps do as well as Adele did at the Grammys this year. So hello, Terps. Hope you can hear me. This has been One Final Thought. And with that, we saw that amazing Maryland basketball video, Mellow from the Other Side. How perfect was that? So perfect. I love a good spoof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was a good one, Juan. Thanks for joining us here at the end of our show, as always. And thank you guys for joining us this week on the show. That's all for today. I'm Alex Fung. And I'm Danielle Stein. We'll see you soon.